Hey everyone, I hope you all having an awesome day. This is part five of our introduction to plugin development with Strapi version four. If you missed any of the previous videos, check out the card above to catch up on where we are today. But in this video, we're going to finish the backend functionality of our plugin. And to make sure that you guys know where to get extra help just in case you get stuck, I'm going to show you Strapi server API in the docs so you could use it as a reference. Then we're going to to examine the route control and service that is created when we first generated our plugin using the CLI command. Then we're going to create our own routes, controllers and services to add the functionality to our to-do application. And we're going to test it with Insomnia. Finally, we're going to review what we learned and cover what's going to be next in the last following video. Let's now take a look where we could find extra help if we need it in the docs. If you go to strappy.io slash plugins dash resources, you're going to find this awesome page where you could get all the help that you need. So if you're going to click plugin API reference and here it'll show you all the great links that you need. Since we're working on server API for plugins, click here and now you get to see some additional information. Let me zoom in a little bit. And the reason why I'm showing you this, even though you might be going through a lot of video tutorials or different resources, you you still should rely on the documentation from Strapi to get extra help. So here you could find everything from creating controllers, routes, services, and other things that are required to help you build your plugin. And in our case, we're going to focus today on how to generate our first route, controller, and services. Let's now take a look at the example route, service, and controller that was created with our plugin when we first created it via this CLI command. First, let's start our application by running yarn develop. Once Strapi starts, let's go ahead and log in. And with all our previous work, we have our to-do plugin UI, we finished it, and we created our first content type, which was our to-do. So now we have to work on connecting the front end of our to-do application to work with our back end. Currently, it's not doing that. So I just added a new to-do. If we go to our content manager, you don't see it here. So we need to create the routes, controllers, and services that are going to handle that function. Functionality. But first, let's take a look at the example of routes, controllers, and services that were generated automatically when we created our plugin. So we have our URL here. When I click send, it's going to see if that URL matches in the routes, which will fire off a controller that will call a service that will display this message. In code, we could go to plugins in the server folder and we will have the routes, controller, and the services. Let's take a look at the route. When the URL request matches the path, it will call our controller that's found in our controller folder. Our controller is going to call our service that has a function called get welcome message. In the services folder, we could find that service function. So to recap, when we make a request, our route will match the path. If match is found, it will call the controller. The controller will call a service and the service will handle whatever business logic that we needed to do. So we're going to create all the routes, but we're going to start with our first one first. Then we're going to create our controller and service so I could show you how it runs in the application. Inside our routes folder within the index file, I'm going to keep the initial route here as reference, but we're going to create our first route to be able to find our to-dos. We're going to use the method get, the path in the URL is going to be find and the handle or our controller is going to be our find controller within our to-do controllers folder. And to make sure that we could access it publicly, let's set auth for false. Right now, when I run run develop to restart my application, it's going to fail. The reason for it is because we have our route, but we did not define our controller. Let's do that now. Inside the controllers folder, let's create a new file called to-do. This is where we're going to define all of our controllers that will be responsible for handling our to-do functionality. Let's first export an empty object and within our index file, now let's import our to-dos from our to-do file and make sure that we export it. Going back to our to-do folder, let's create our first controller. We're going to create an async function, which we're going to call find. And inside here, we're going to pass the context. We're going to put a simple try catch block. If there's an error, our context has a simple throw method. So we're going to throw a 500 error. 
inside the try block, we're going to return and make sure to await our service that we're going to create. We have access to Strapi where we are able to call the plugin method where we're able to look up the plugin base by name. And we are also able to look up the service base by name. And we're able to find our method, which we're going to call find in our services, which is going to take in the context query that we get when we make the request. Now that our controller is complete, let's go and create our service. Going into our services, let's create a new file called to do. This is where we're going to define all the services. Let's copy and paste this export to make things easier. And inside here, we're going to create our own service using an async function called find. It is going to take in a query and it's going to return our data. Strapi method has access to entity service that we will discuss in just a second. And entity service has a method called find many to which we're going to pass our plugin and our query. Lastly, let's export our to-do service. So go into the index file and now let's import our to-do and we're going to require it from our to-do folder and make sure we export it as well. So let's start our application by running yarn develop. Once our application starts, we define our route to use the find path, which will call our find controller, which will call our find service that we just created. So let's test that out. When I click send, we now have our first to do. Let's add a second to do. And save it and let's run another request. Perfect. We're able to see all of our to do's. So now that we know how to set up a route controller and service for the brevity of this tutorial, I'm going to paste the rest of the routes controllers and services. I will go over them with you and then I will share a link where you could find the code snippets. And finally, we will discuss the entity service that we were using to get data from our database. So back in our routes, we're going to paste in the rest of the routes that we need. And I'll quickly go over them. We are going to have a route that will allow us to use the post method using the create path to call the create controller to allow us to create a new to do where we're making a delete request and our path will be delete and provide the ID that we need. It will call call our delete controller. And finally, we will have one controller for toggle. And I made a separate one where when someone clicks the checkbox, it's going to toggle it from either done or not done. And it's going to use the toggle path, passing the ID as well as hitting the toggle controller. And finally, we have the last one to be able to update the name of our to do, which is going to call the put method. We're going to hit the update path, which is going to take in the ID of the to do and is going to call our update controller. So now let's go ahead and paste in the rest of the controllers and services and review what they do. Let's finish up creating our controllers and services. Back inside our controller folder where we created our find controller from scratch, I'm going to paste in the last few controllers. And you will see that we are following a very similar pattern. Basically, we're just calling a service that was accomplishing some business logic that we needed. And that's exactly what we're doing. So delete controller and create controller, update controller and toggle controller, they follow the same pattern. Our route calls our controller and our controller calls a service. So let's go ahead and import the rest of the services. So now in our services folder, let's go ahead and paste the rest of the services and I will provide the snippets for you in the description below. So we have a delete service, create service, update service and toggle service. And if there's one takeaway, we're using Strapi's entity service to accomplish what we need. So whenever we get data from our controller, either our params or request body, we're able to pass it to our service and using entity service, we 
are able to communicate with our database. Now, before we test out the changes that we made, I just want to mention Strapi probably has the best community out there for an open source project. Definitely go and become a member of our Discord channel, or if you're looking for resources specifically for plugins, definitely check out the plugin resource page. And like I mentioned, our Discord, our community is amazing. I myself don't know everything. So I'm very thankful that we have this community where I could myself ask for help as well. So if you might know something, definitely offer your help. And if you're looking for help, join our Discord, join our forum, ask questions, because that's what makes us awesome is the community itself. And to finish up in our services, we used Entity Service API, which is the recommended way for us to communicate with our database in most cases. So if you go to the documentation and search Entity Service API, you will see all the different methods that we used, including find one, find many, create, update, and delete. So whenever you're building plugins or customizing Strapi, in most cases, Entity Service API will be the way to go. And they have great examples of what you saw that I used in our services to help you get started. Now, let's test out the change changes of what we just did. So let's run our application by starting yarn develop. And in Insomnia, I created a couple of different requests. We have a get request to get all to do's. We have create to do where we pass the data that we want to add. We have toggle to do, update to do, and delete to do. So let's go ahead and create a to do. I'm going to say strappy is awesome and sent. And so that looks like it worked. Let's go into our application refresh. So notice we have Strapi is awesome, fantastic, and it's not done yet. So let's go ahead and toggle it to get it done. That was ID four. So toggle, we're going to pass the ID four. So when we click send, it's going to toggle it to done. So let's check it out. Did it work? And it sure did. It set it to true. Now we could test our update. This is to update the name. So let's say it's the ID of four. We're going to say you are still awesome. Why not click send? So there we go. It updated. Let's check in our application refresh and look at that. You are still awesome. And finally let's delete it by using our delete to do and repassing the idea for click send and let's refresh here. And it's fantastic. Our full CRUD functionality works. Oh my gosh, another long video. So let's quickly review what we accomplished today. We created our routes, our controllers and our services, and we learned about entity service, the record recommended way to communicate with your database in Strapi. So what do we have left? What's next? So to finally finish our application, we need to combine our admin portion, which is our UI and our server portion, which is our backend to communicate together. And that's exactly what we're going to do next in the final video of the session. With that being said, I want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you hanging out with us on this video. And if you have any feedback or suggestions, definitely let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And more importantly, if you haven't subscribed to this channel or join us on Discord, go ahead and do that now. And if you do want to connect with me on Twitter, you could go at Coding30 and say hello to me. But with that for today, I just want to say thank you so much and have a great rest of your day or week or weekend and I'll see you in the next video.